Have you ever wondered why Moses, the great leader of the Israelites, never set foot in the Promised Land? This iconic figure, a beacon of hope and faith, who led his people out of Egyptian bondage, never got to experience the fruits of the Promised Land. A land flowing with milk and honey, yet denied to the very man who was instrumental in its discovery. What could be the reason behind this? A divine punishment or a lesson for humanity? Let's unravel this mystery together. Moses, a man of faith, courage and leadership, led the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery. This man, a central figure in the narrative of the Exodus, was born into a world of hardship and oppression. Adopted by the Pharaoh's daughter, his early years were spent in the opulence of the Egyptian palace. However, destiny had a different path for him. His life took a drastic turn when he became aware of his true heritage. A burning bush, a divine calling, and Moses found himself entrusted with the monumental task of liberating the Israelites from the shackles of Egyptian slavery. As a leader, Moses was indomitable. He confronted Pharaoh, demanding freedom for his people, and led them through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. He was a beacon of hope for the Israelites during their 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Through trials, tribulations, and miracles, Moses remained steadfast, guided by his unwavering faith in God. His relationship with God was unique and intimate. He spoke to God as a friend, received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, and his face shone with divine radiance after these encounters. He was a prophet, a mediator, a lawgiver, and a shepherd to his people. Yet despite his close relationship with God, his unparalleled leadership, and his pivotal role in the history of the Israelites, Moses did not enter the Promised Land. This begs the question, why? What could have possibly barred this man of God from the land flowing with milk and honey? The incident at Meribah holds the key to our question. It's a tale of a parched people, a desperate leader, and a single act of disobedience that changed the course of a journey. Their throats were dry, their spirits were low. The Israelites, in the wilderness of Zin, found themselves without water. They were thirsty, not just for water, but for a sign, a miracle that would reaffirm their faith in the journey they had embarked upon. They turned to Moses, their leader, their guide, with their parched lips and desperate eyes. Now, Moses had been commanded by God to gather the assembly, take the staff and speak to the rock in their presence, and it would yield its water. A simple command from the divine, a command to speak, not to strike, not to hit, but to speak. Words carry power, they carry intention, they carry faith. And it was faith that the Israelites needed in this moment of desperation. But in a turn of events, Moses, perhaps in his own desperation or frustration, struck the rock not once but twice with his staff, and water gushed out, quenching the thirst of the people, but also quenching the faith that was to be instilled in them. For you see, Moses' action was not just a physical act of striking a rock, it was a disobedience of God's command, a deviation from the divine instruction. He had been commanded to speak, to demonstrate the power of words, the power of faith. But he chose to strike, to use force, to take action that was not commanded. This disobedience, this deviation, did not go unnoticed. God saw it, and God declared that because of this act, Moses would not lead the people into the promised land. A seemingly simple act of striking a rock had far-reaching consequences, consequences that changed the destiny of a leader. Moses's disobedience at Meribah led God to declare that Moses would not enter the promised land. This was the incident at Meribah, a defining moment in the journey of the Israelites and a crucial piece in the puzzle of why Moses did not enter the promised land. Moses's punishment seems harsh, doesn't it? But there's more to it. You see, obedience forms the bedrock of the relationship between the Creator and His followers. It's not about mindless subservience, but rather, a trusting surrender to the divine wisdom that sees beyond our human limitations. And when this obedience is breached, consequences naturally follow. Not as a vindictive act, but as a way to uphold the sacredness of this divine relationship. Consider Moses, a man of immense faith and leadership. His journey from the bulrushes of the Nile to the precipice of the Promised Land is a testament to his unwavering devotion. But even Moses, the chosen liberator of the Israelites, was not immune to the effects of disobedience. Remember the incident at Meribah? Moses, in a moment of anger and frustration, struck the rock twice instead of speaking to it as God commanded. An act of disobedience that might seem minor to us, but in the grand scheme of divine plans, it was a deviation from the spiritual obedience God expected. This act led to a hard consequence. 
Moses was barred from entering the Promised Land, the very destination he had led the Israelites towards for 40 long years. But why such a severe punishment for a seemingly small act of defiance? Well, it's because Moses' disobedience in that heated moment undermined the sanctity of God's command. It set a dangerous precedent for the Israelites, who might have thought, if Moses can disobey God, so can we. This narrative had to be corrected, and the consequence had to be significant enough to reinforce the importance of obedience. So, Moses' punishment wasn't just about that single act of disobedience, it was a powerful lesson etched in the annals of biblical history. It underscored the sacredness of obedience to God's commands, and the consequences that follow when that sacredness is violated. Although Moses was a great leader, even he faced the consequences of disobedience. Moses' story, though ancient, holds valuable lessons for us today. It's like a timeless tale that transcends the boundaries of centuries, cultures, and contexts, always presenting us with fresh perspectives and insights. Let's delve into the first lesson, the importance of obedience. Moses was chosen by God, entrusted with great leadership, and gifted with extraordinary miracles. Yet even he wasn't exempt from the necessity of obedience. When God instructed him to speak to the rock at Meribah, Moses acted out of frustration and struck the rock instead. It was a momentary lapse, but it was disobedience nonetheless. This teaches us that no matter our position or power, obedience to God's instructions should be our utmost priority. Moving on to the second lesson, the consequences of disobedience. Moses' disobedience at Meribah cost him the privilege of leading the Israelites into the Promised Land. Regardless of his previous obedience and sacrifices, one act of disobedience had severe repercussions. It's a reminder that our actions carry weight and disobedience can have dire consequences. It's not about being perfect, but about striving for obedience in all things. And finally, the third lesson, the significance of trust in God. Moses' act of striking the rock was not just disobedience, it was a moment of doubt in God's provision. Despite witnessing countless miracles, Moses allowed a moment of fear and frustration to overshadow his faith. This act reminds us to trust in God's plan, even in challenging times. Faith is not just believing in miracles, but trusting in God's wisdom and timing. To sum it all up, Moses' story is a powerful narrative of leadership, faith, and obedience. It teaches us that obedience to God is not an optional attribute, but a critical requirement. It reminds us that our actions have consequences, and that trust in God is vital even when circumstances seem challenging. Moses' life serves as a reminder that our actions have consequences, and obedience to God is paramount. It's a message that rings true today, as it did thousands of years ago, and will continue to do so for generations to come. So, why didn't Moses enter the Promised Land? This question has been the driving force of our exploration today. To answer it, let's recap the key points we've discussed. We began by introducing Moses, a man of great faith and leadership, who led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt and through the wilderness for 40 long years. Despite his unwavering commitment to his people and to God, Moses, like all of us, was not without fault. The critical turning point came at the incident at Meribah, a moment that dramatically altered Moses' destiny. The Israelites, thirsty and discontent, began to quarrel, questioning Moses and God's ability to provide for them. In his frustration, Moses disobeyed God's command to speak to the rock to bring forth water. Instead, he struck the rock twice with his staff, a direct contradiction of God's instructions. This act of disobedience, as we've seen, had severe consequences. Moses' actions in Meribah were more than just a moment of weakness, they were a public display of doubt in God's word, and a misrepresentation of God's power to the people. God, in his righteousness, decided that Moses would not lead the Israelites into the Promised Land. This was not a decision made lightly or without sorrow, but it was necessary to uphold God's justice. Even Moses, a leader chosen by God, was not exempt from the consequences of his actions. In essence, Moses' story serves as a powerful reminder to all of us about the importance of obedience and faith in God's word. It shows us that disobedience, even in moments of frustration or doubt, can have far-reaching consequences. Moses' story is a powerful reminder of the importance of obedience and the consequences of disobedience. It shows us that no one, not even a leader as great as Moses, is exempt from God's justice.